Charterman, Charterman Rhyme Charterman, Charterman, Charterman Rhyme Greedy comics, toys are hella sick Hell whackin' it, take a bad hit Take a bad hit, Charterman uh, Subscribe What's up you guys, Shardimus Prime here, doing another NECA Toys action figure review on the Predator Movies Ultimate Fugitive Predator action figure. If you're trying to pick this figure up, you can do so at Big, 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 get your big badass toys at BigBadToyStore.com. Click the link in the description below. I actually did pick this up at my local Target store, I'm looking forward to this Predator movie, I'm really curious about it. And I had to pick up the figure, it didn't look too bad. So anyway, we got a little Velcro piece holding this together right here, and then you can see the ultimate fugitive predator right there inside nice product shot right here and then by the way nice cover i really like how that looks almost looks like the eyes are glowing and then on this side it says the predator fugitive predator ultimate action figure and then on the very back you can see a whole bunch of product shots there's a read up over here if you want to read it go ahead and pause it now and then on this side not much more going on you get that same image the predator fugitive predator ultimate action figure not much going on at the top it says 17 and up and then on the very bottom you can see all the people responsible for creating this figure anyway let's get to it and crack this thing open and here's the ultimate fugitive Predator out of the packaging and I am pretty excited for this Predator movie. I'm pretty stoked about it. Now from what I've seen in the two trailers is that there are two different Predators. There's a really big ultimate Predator and this is the regular sized Predator over here that I guess is supposed to get his butt kicked by the ultimate Predator and this looks really cool. I'm seeing a ton of really good looking sculpted details and the paint apps look awesome as always with these NECA toys. It doesn't come with a ton of accessories but the accessories are pretty cool so let's get a closer look at those, and then we'll get a closer look at this Ultimate Fugitive Predator. So here are all the accessories that come with this Ultimate Fugitive Predator, and I don't really think it's that many accessories compared to the Ultimate figures that we've seen from other characters and other franchises. I feel like this is a little bit on the light side as far as accessories go for an Ultimate figure, unless I'm totally wrong about what I said earlier, and this is actually the Ultimate Predator, if that's what they meant. I haven't seen the movie yet. It comes out today. So anyway, uh, we get the two heads, which we'll look at later on, and we we get two sets of forearms and you can see that the detail on these are quite amazing. I mean, I just love how realistic this looks. I mean, as always, NECA nails that with this, you know, when it comes to the paint sculpt, it just looks great. Love how the nails look right here and everything. A little extra paint right there in the joints, which do cause some stiffness, as you can see. I'm trying to hinge this up and down, and you kind of have to heat this up first, and the more you break up the paint that's in that joint right there, it'll move a lot better for you. And then we get the two uh, gauntleted forearms right here. I'm calling them gauntleted forearms because uh, we have these gauntlets around them, and they have all kinds of great detail in them. One thing that would have been cool is if you could switch the wrists out, you know, pop the wrists off and on. I don't know, maybe if you heat that up quite a bit. Oh, it looks like, yeah, if I apply a lot of pressure, a lot of force, I can go ahead and pop that off. So that's cool. So if you heat them up, you can go ahead and swap the hands if you want an open hand and on, on this forearm right here, you can do that. Uh, you can go ahead and attach the blades, which look really good too. Uh, could be a little bit tricky, but it's not the hardest thing in the world. Just, you know, port into each of the uh, slits that we have for these. They're close together, which does make it a little bit tricky, though, because, you know, you're going to bump one off as you put the other one on. So I'm trying to do this without knocking them off. Ugh. And by the way, don't the blades look really good? They're nice and pointy, which I really dig. But really nice silver paint for these. Nice little sculpted detail. But again, yeah, porting these on here is a little bit tricky, kind of annoying, just because they're so close to each other. And I feel like I'm just knocking one out as I put another one in. So that can be frustrating. But of course, you know, as you saw earlier, I did have this set up, you know, a little easier to do off camera than while looking through a viewfinder. Okay, quick correction over here is that putting these on on the left forearm right here was actually really easy to do. Uh, there is just a little problem with this one where the plastic plastic hasn't been cut out all the way on this other slit right here. As you can see, they're two totally different sizes. So I just need to, uh, or I do need to take an X-Acto knife and take some of the plastic out. I actually had that problem with this uh, head sculpt right over here, the maskless head sculpt. As you can see, uh, I did have to take an X-Acto knife and take out some plastic in there to get that to fit onto the peg. So yeah, a little bit of a QC problem right there. Uh, just took a little bit of fixing with an X-Acto knife though. So here's looking at the head sculpt with the mask on. And I I think it looks awesome. I really dig this quite a bit. I really like this dark black that we're seeing right here. I think it's a pretty cool design too. We get some gold right there in the middle, a couple of splotches of white paint right there. 
Looks really nice having that darker black paint right there for the eyes too. A little bit of gloss right there reflecting for the eye sockets. You know, that's pretty neat. And then the dreads look pretty cool too. You can see some silver right there for those ties. And I love that you could see his actual face underneath right here. That is great. A lot of paint detail in just that right there. That's pretty cool. I'm really digging that. Even these little black spots and everything. And these are made out of soft material as always. Wow, they even get underneath the head right here. I didn't notice that earlier. That is pretty awesome. I dig that. It's a really cool looking mask head sculpt. And you get another one uh, that does not have the mask on. And I got, oh boy. See, popping these off is really tricky to do. Doing it off screen, man. And I gotta say, it is particularly difficult getting this maskless head sculpt on here. Especially because I had to take out some of the extra plastic inside the head. Even doing that, it's still a little tricky. But hey, it looks awesome. I really do like how it came out. Nice green eyes right there. Really creepy beady eyes. Ooh, that's freaky looking. And that mandible right there. Oh man, that's so gross. I love the attention to detail right here on the inside of the mouth. I don't know if I darken things up, zoom in a little bit right there. Uh, I think that looks really cool. A lot of attention to detail on those teeth too. That just looks great, man. Yeah, great sculpted detail on these. And then the dreads look good right here in the back once again. I love the little shoulder cannon that we're seeing right here. Nice little details of gold over that gunmetal color. You get rotation right here at the top. It could hinge up and back and all that. And you can get it to hinge right over here at the front too. So you get two hinges right here, which is pretty cool. I dig that. And of course, rotate side to side. And then looking at the armor, it looks really good. I love how there's some battle damage right there. Nice wash over the silver. The gold paint looks really good. It's very consistent. Really like the sculpted gnarly look that we get right there on that shoulder pad. On this side, not so bad. Hey, that rhymes. And then the arms look really good. A lot of nice paint detail throughout. And yeah, those came off. Well, swapping the heads, the fists look really good right here too with those nails. I wish we got disc accessories, especially with this being an ultimate fugitive predator. I thought that we'd, you know, get some more accessories. So having these with the spikes splayed out and all that for those discs would have been nice to have. Then we get the netting right over here. And then looking at the predator butt, there's a butt panel right there. The back has all kinds of detail on it and everything. That looks really good. Can't really complain about that, man. That looks great. The netting looks pretty good throughout, too. Then he has these thigh guards right here. Looking pretty sweet. Uh, you can't move this around. I had this slip, you know, so you want to kind of keep that in place. But still, it looks pretty good. If you want to remove those, I guess you could. And the knee pads look pretty awesome right there. The shins look really good, too. Just throughout, I love the sculpted detail on this. I can't sing NECA's praises enough when it comes to the sculpted detail. Just wish that they would stop putting paint in all these joints, you know? Because when they add the paint to the joints right there, that's what makes things really stiff. That's how breaks happen. Even though I didn't have a break happen with this particular piece. And look at those predator toes. Ooh, yeah, beautiful predator toes. I love those. And he does have peggles at the bottom of the feet. So we get some pretty good articulation with this predator figure. You can make his head look up pretty far, and it goes that way with both of the head sculpts and you can make the head look down that much you get side to side motion and a good range of head pivoting right there uh, shoulder joints will move outward just that far and downward you can move them forward you can move them back we get some soft material right over here on the shoulder pads no bicep swivel uh, but we do get double jointed elbows so you can bend those elbows and there goes a blade you can bend them in that much you get rotation at the forearm and then you get rotation at the wrist and they both hinge up and down you get a diaphragm joint so you can turn side to side, get diaphragm pivot, he'll crunch forward that much and back that much. You also get a waist joint and some waist pivoting, very little waist pivoting, and it doesn't really crunch forward and back at the waist, mostly just turns side to side. Uh, hip joints, oops, this cover's coming down, but you can move the hips outward that much, and then there goes the other blade. This right side is just awful with the blades, man. It's been very frustrating, but anyway, you can move the hips outward that much, and you can get them kicking forward that much, back that much, upper thigh swivel, or it's actually a hip swivel all the way up there. There. And we do get double jointed knees and then the ankles are on a ball joint So they move down a little bit and then they move up some you get side to side motion and you do get a little bit of ankle pivot Now to measure out this ultimate fugitive predator You can see that he is standing at about nine inches tall just a little less than nine inches And then here's our fugitive predator next to a couple other predators
Predators from NECA Toys. I cannot remember the name of this Predator figure. Please, somebody let me know. I thought it was the Scar Predator, but it's not. So, yeah, somebody let me know. And I believe this is the Lost Predator from Predator 2. And this new figure right here actually stands pretty well. You know what I mean? It's like right in between these two in height. Not too bad. And then here's Predator next to a NECA Toys human figure from Aliens. So they're not from the exact same franchise. But, hey, uh, Vasquez over here is just a little bit shorter than your average person, I think. So, I don't know. I think they scale pretty well. You know, the Predators are supposed to be pretty huge. And then here's Predator next to your average 6 inch scale figure. Here we have the Marvel Legends Big Time Letdown Spider-Man. Oh, you look pretty harmless. There's no way you could ever- ah! Oh, my eyes again! Oh, yee! So I'd like to thank you guys for watching my video, especially those of you that watch these videos all the way from the beginning to the end. It really does help out this YouTube channel a lot, as well as when you hit that like button, leave your comment down below, and please hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell if you have not already. This is a very cool looking figure. I'm excited for this new Predator movie, so that will definitely gauge how I feel about this figure after after seeing the movie, you know what I mean? I may have a more emotional attachment to it, maybe less, I don't know, we'll see. It depends on how much I like the movie. So far, it looks like it's gonna be really fun, though. So I'm excited for it. This figure looks really good. I like the design, I like the sculpted detail and paint apps, but there are some things that bother me, uh, like getting those, uh, you know, get, getting the blades attached to the forearm, that's really annoying. The fact that I use the X-Acto knife to touch things up here and there, that's really obnoxious. At some point, I do hope that NECA includes a hinge system System for their ankles instead of just the ball joint but you know overall not a bad figure but some irritating things about it so I'm giving it a sud rating of it's not so bad because I gotta say I still really like the figure I think it's a really good piece anyway I want to know what you guys think in the comments section below if you want to know the latest in action figure news reviews and forums you can find it all over at toynewseye.com if you want to stay in touch with me on the social media I'm on Twitter Instagram and Twitch I will be hosting uh, my live gaming show uh, on the PS4 Spider-Man game tomorrow at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So I hope to see you guys there tomorrow, 3 p.m. PST, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace! I'm short of Prime videos. Hey, you should click one. Yeah, click on one of them. Or subscribe if you haven't.